Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Alexander Friedman. I am uh, founder and CEO of company VAPI. VAPI is an IT integrator, IT platform uh, that consists of more than 50 different services, warehouses, courier services, and different services that is all connected at one platform and all gives you access to European online trading business. So if you have any questions about warehousing, fulfillment, deliveries, hi, Luz. <laughs> and uh, you can ask us, you can send an email to me and we will help you very, very fast. Today, we have wonderful guests, uh, Robert and Stefan uh, from company Taxually. Taxually uh, is a company that looks different and how VAT should be done in 21st century. Uh, hi again, Robert and Stefan. Hi again. Hi again, everybody. Uh, so thank you. I would like, yeah, I would like Robert to you to tell a little bit about yourself. Okay, thank you all for joining uh, to this webinar and thank you to having us. Uh, allow me to start with uh, this webinar with a short introduction and a little background of Textually. So Textually is a highly innovative and fully automated VAT compliance company. We launched our company in the early of 2019, our vision is to make VAT uh, compliance easier than ever before. So we put significant uh, effort into finding the best route between the simplicity and the perfection. So I am the vice president of uh, Textually. My responsibility is uh, the overall productivity and effectivity of our sales organization. I'm sitting here with uh, Stefan who is the CEO and the co-founder of our company. And in this, during this webinar, we will show you the services, what includes our com uh, to our company. So it's a full registration uh, process, uh, VAT compliance services, what we are providing. So calculation VAT and uh, handling uh, notifications with different tax authorities. So uh, I, think, I think Robert is also very important for you to tell a little bit about your background. Because what, what did you do before uh, the tax only? Yeah, okay. that's, that's, uh, I can do that as well, just to yeah. uh, give a little background. So most of our team and the uh, founders are ex big four. We realize that um, there's so much more to do to VAT compliance than um, it has been offered so far in the market. There was a lot of fragmentation and we thought that the technology is sufficiently advanced to put it on the pillar of AI and things that other providers don't offer in this market. And that's why we primarily established uh, Taxly to bring that simplicity to clients and to remove much of the administrative burden that uh, tax compliance has been causing, especially for small and medium sized businesses looking to expand across Europe and not just Europe, but also globally. Yeah, and here, uh, when you said about the small and medium companies, I instantly have a question for you. Like, how do you think, um, or how can you comment the situation that most of the small companies that only start, uh, they don't think about the taxes and about the VAT. The, the main thing what they're doing is they think about the product and marketing and like at what at what point should they start to think about taxes and vat very good question and this is something that we come across frequently with our clients who approach us and typically what we see is those who want to grow big they approach us very quickly they have tax as a little devil sitting on their left shoulder and telling them that you better uh, watch out for us we'll, because we'll be there and we'll bite you. And uh, those who don't have any professional objectives, they typically ignore or resist to the uh, taxation. But I can tell you one thing, you can try as hard 
as possible, but tax is something that won't disappear and it's almost as certain as death. <laughs> yeah, and it, it will certainly uh, get after you, right? At what, at what point it will find you. <laughs> so exactly. it's better to start to think about it instantly when you start. Exactly. That's the best solution. Okay. Yeah. Before we continue, uh, I have uh, several questions for our audience, for the guests. So uh, very important uh, so that we could give the best content for everybody. Uh, answer us uh, three questions. The first question is, are you new to online business or you are already an uh, experienced online trading business? So if you are new, press A or write new. And if you're experienced, send us B, like or experienced one. The second question that is very important is uh, at what marketplaces are you trading? So are you trading only through Amazon or you're trading also through different uh, like eBay or Allegra or dif different marketplaces, or wh whatever they are, just write the name. And the third uh, question for you is, is tax question, VAT question, a headache for you? If it is not, just write, not a big deal. If it is, write a headache. <laughs> so please be active, ask questions because we invited uh, absolutely wonderful people for you and we want uh, you to be active to ask questions because you can get some practical advice right now. And now let's continue to uh, our guests. And um, I think you can start. You can start on, on, on the program that you have prepared. Okay, okay great. So as, as a first point, um, we've discussed what we offer. So let me just uh, share my screen so that we are all on board. Mm -hmm. And please just let me know if um, you see our screen. Okay. I see, I see it wonderful. Great. So with the ambition to make VAT compliance easier than ever before, we've um, reorganized the process to strip out all the inefficiencies and all the additional administration that both registrations, but also the ongoing reporting and preparation of VAT return causes for a company operating on an international basis. And um, our primary focus is online retailers, but we also uh, offer these services to corporate clients. Uh, those are car manufacturing businesses, pharmaceuticals, antivirus companies, as well as service providers. So we've tried to branch into different aspects and with that uh, cover most of the issues that uh, people on the market are facing day by day. And as a first and important thing here, and this is where the story of taxation begins, is when do you actually have to uh, pay uh, taxes and register in a new country? So as uh, Alexander to told us, and as this webinar is mainly about online retailers, we thought to bring you two main examples what can trigger this obligation uh, for you across Europe, but also similarly in uh, countries outside of Europe. The first one is, and this should be at the back of your head always, is once you put a product in a certain country, inventory more broadly, that means that you should have a VAT number there. So that's the first reason. The second reason is if your sales to a given country exceed a certain volume. So you can typically think of the major European economies as the major uh, countries where you might need the registration. It's a simple, there's a simple economic reason behind it. There's the highest purchasing power is there. So there's the highest probability you will need to eventually register. So these are uh, what we see also in the market. Uh, those who are with Amazon, of course, they're typically in need for registration in the five or seven Amazon countries if they store in Czech Republic and Poland. Uh, and then the bigger economies like Netherlands, Belgium, Portugal, Austria are typically markets uh, that follow. 
So just to give you uh, a little story of um, a seller who we came across, and I can tell you that out of 10 new clients, nine asked this question. If I have both, which one is, uh, which one counts first? Can I just report when I exceeded the threshold? Well, I would love to say that it's only a business decision, but actually it's um, also a legal consideration you need to have. So it's always the earlier day that determines the uh, need for registration in a country. And just to give you a little um, decision uh, tree here. So the first is, do you have, do you allow at all uh, Amazon to store your inventory in different EU countries or do you participate in the pan EU program? So we try to give you here more tangible references so you can think of these words that might have appeared also when you were creating your account in Amazon. If you have allowed, then basically the date when you signed up is a good reference point from which moment on you need to register in a given country. If you haven't allowed, then there's a trickier question and that's about looking at your sales and how they uh, measure against the different uh, distance selling thresholds in Europe. So these thresholds are available and we'll show them afterwards later. And um, I'm not sure we missed the beginning of the presentation, uh, but the video is recorded and these slides uh, will be shared uh, by us for sure. So they can be distributed afterwards uh, to whom and when needed. Okay. So, and as for the sales, so once you've exceeded the thresholds, that's a good um, deadline to measure against. And if you have, haven't, then there's still a good trick that you can always uh, register voluntarily. So this is also an interesting story. We like to talk to with clients that if, if, if you don't want to deal with taxes, then register voluntarily in most of the markets where you have already business. And what we see in e-commerce is that the growth rate is not very incremental. It's typically incremental in the first year and a half, and then it uh, explodes into an exponential growth rate, which can cause a lot of uh, taxation issues. And uh, to prevent situations like that, we suggest that if you can afford, register voluntarily in advance and forget about the problem in the future. Because as you grow, there will be other problems that you will need to take care of that will be more painful than dealing with taxes. Stefan, before you go to the next slide, uh, give me the opportunity to ask a question from you, okay? Okay. Yep. Uh, so, uh, I think we have to add some uh, simple explanation to everything that you're telling. Like, for example, uh, I am in Riga and I am uh, want to sell uh, some toys, beer toy, beer, teddy bear toys, and I want to sell it to Spain. So, if I understand correct, so if I want to store this teddy bears in Spain, I have to instantly register the VAT, right? That's correct. If I store them in Riga, Latvia, and I'm selling it, sending it through. Uh, post to Spain, I don't have to register VAT instantly, right? That's correct. But well, I'll have to register it at what point? The country has its own uh, distance sale threshold. So that means if your sales exceed 35,000 in one calendar year, okay, you will then have to register if you continue selling from uh, Riga to Spain. Spain. Okay. Okay. Understood. But the threshold is for every country different. So somewhere is higher, somewhere is lower. Okay. The, this amount, 35,000, you call it threshold, right? Yes. Yes. Threshold. Okay. And this threshold, it's on one of the next few slides for each of the countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. It varies between 35,000 and 100,000, but it's usually around 30,000. There are a few exceptions 
which could afford to increase it to 100,000. And again, what is it registry voluntarily? Like example, what is it voluntarily registry VAT? That means sticking to the example you just mentioned, uh, you sell from Riga to Spain. Okay. But instead of calculating every month how many sales you've made, okay. you decide, look, I don't want to bother with that. Actually, please register me now. I'm confident that my business in Spain will be more than 35,000 this year. So okay. I don't want to um, pay attention to it. And there's also a more sophisticated reason for that. Uh, so to decide by yourself to register earlier. Mm -hmm. And that's when the VAT rate in the country of your customer is lower than where it's sold from. Okay, understood. So imagine us, just for um, general knowledge of the attendees of this webinar, we are a Hungarian-based company. Hungary, mm -hmm. apart from uh, being famous for its beautiful women, it's also famous for its very high VAT rates, being 27%. How, how, uh, how big? 27%. 27, wow. Okay. So, if you're an online seller, you typically define your price in gross value. So, let's assume 100 euros is for what, what you sell your products for. Yeah. Your teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, if you sell from Hungary, that means that your profit uh, is, if you sell from Hungary and calculate with Hungarian VAT, 7%, uh, seven percentage points uh, lower than if you apply the VAT rate, for example, in the UK, where it's 20%. Okay. So as a Hungarian company... But at the same time, if the volume exceeds, I will have to register VAT in, in Hungary. In UK, because that's the country of your customer. Ah, okay. And if my clients are from Hungary and I'm then from Riga and the amount exceeds, I'll have to register and pay 27 in any, in any way. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, let's continue. Great. So now that we understand what is the requirements, just a, a few more benefits and what we see as the few pain points of uh, online retailers when they're considering how to do this. It's, it's, it's painful, uh, every country has its own um, threshold, its own rules, and wh where we wanted to simplify this is, first of all, to it on the technical platform so that there's no room for human error that's one thing the second thing is people who are in online business and people who are selling they don't want to count beans they want to get to the answer as quickly as possible know what's their uh, VAT liability and just get over it so what we did is and we'll show this later to you is you upload your data or we can even extract it from your marketplace. We calculate it in a few minutes and you, you will receive the payable amount instantly. Isn't it great from moving 30 minutes, an hour spending on VAT, now it can be done in a few minutes. Second thing, data extraction. Playing with Excel spreadsheets is not exciting. We all have our, um, stage in life when we like to play and figure out how things can be done in Excel spreadsheets. But after a while, it's boring. You just want to get over the task and simplify it. So what we found out is that if we can extract data on your behalf, it will simplify your life. The next thing is, the last thing sellers like to hear is that there's a foreign language tax authority chasing them yeah. uh, uh, <clears throat> and it's not as exciting as going to another country and meeting new people tax authorities are not typically very friendly so when they call you it's not to ask how you are it's usually to tell you my man you're late with your registration you have to pay us this much nobody li likes to get this phone call right robert do you like this type of phone no calls? no but i'm you know i have to deal with the tax authorities like on the daily basis so we are know what we are talking about 
good. At least uh, you've developed your relationships with the ladies in the different yeah, tax course. authorities. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, as these, every country has its own way of doing things, its own requirements, it can be quite difficult and time consuming to catch up on all these requirements. So what we did is we looked at what are the similarities. We created an online questionnaire, which I'm sure all of you online traders are uh, familiar. familiar with. You can fill it out. You download the documents that you need for this and let us just do without it. So we see this more as a partnership than a service provision where we can let you uh, do your own thing and we get, um, we sort out the rest for you. And now before we move into the reporting obligations and the differences that we were talking so far, let us show you in a few minutes how these, um, how this process actually looks like and how simple it can actually be to create an account. Just confirm, please, Alexander, do you see the Taxually web page? Yes, yes, I see it, of course. Excellent. So what we've talking about, putting it into practice, all you need to do is create a Taxually account. I guess this is uh, pretty familiar. Now, the good thing is that if you're uh, non-European based sellers, then you, Amazon is actually subsidizing the first year for you. So basically the service is for free. If you're European, then we can uh, give you our- Actually, uh, Amazon is subsidizing your service? Yeah. Cool. So we are, um, for, for, for anybody basically who's registered, who's incorporated outside of the EU, mm -hmm. they can uh, register for free. And in the second year, the cost of service is not more than 400 euros per year, which is, I would say, roughly 10th of um, the service that we usually see. So you select a few countries. I think this is fine. Okay. Free for the time being. On average, what we see, just to give you a little background to it, once you start with your business, typically two free countries are where clients start in and then they gradually expand. To, to new countries. So now I will do the, to click on the help me to get a VAT number because we want to register in these three countries. Mm -hmm. We are a United States established company. And we want to move to Europe. I will just click on these buttons and select next step. Here I have to write my name. Okay. It looks like a basic registration to, for example, Facebook. Mm -hmm. So simple. You will put here the, the details and uh, the contact mail and your password. After this step. We accept the different terms. Yeah. So again, what we have done right now, I am a United States based company. I yes. don't have a company, not in Budapest, in Latvia, in Italy. I don't have a company in Europe, but I have registered the VAT number for my United States company in uh, Spain. Yes. From That's this point, I can send the goods to Spain, to the warehouse. Yes, and you can sell. And I can sell uh, my goods in Spain? Or, or outside of Spain, and you can apply your Spanish VAT. Wow. Okay. So now we have to just uh, fill out. And what about the import tax? If I send this beer, uh, teddy beers from China, and I don't have a company in, in Spain? and I have only VAT number. That's a great question. 
import VAT is typically something that as a foreign uh, established company, you wouldn't be able to deduct. If you register for VAT in any of these countries, you're able to deduct that VAT also from your sales. Okay. But you have to pay the import tax, you have to pay instantly when you receive the goods to Spain. Yes, that's true. But so you pay, you pay it from the bank account of United States company? Yes. And this everything is uh, uh, supported by your platform? So this part, we, we don't help with the import payments because that's typically, so if you're in the Amazon world, that's handled by Amazon or the logistics uh, company. Okay. If you are uh, outside of um, Amazon, then typically it's uh, going to be your shipping company who will handle that payment and they will incorporate it into the invoice and fees that you pay. Okay. Okay, but it's still not so once you've had it, you pay it, but you still cannot deduct it mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. So the benefit of having a VAT number in the country is that it enables you to deduct that VAT later on. Okay, thank you. Let's continue. So now when the registration is almost ready, you uh, filled out all these questions and all these uh, data. So now you have to choose on uh, which platform are you selling your goods. So we will go with uh, the example will be with Amazon. Here you have to add uh, who is the uh, legal representative of the company, in which position is he's, he in company. And after that, we have to just fill out some bank details. Mm -hmm. Because for all registrations, what have to be done in uh, different countries, the documents, what is needed is always uh, company extract, VAT certificates, bank certificates, uh, and the copy of ID. These documents are like necessary when you have, when you want to register and move to another country. After these few steps, what Stefan is filling out right now, <clears throat> the portal uh, will give you the power of attorneys what you have to sign and these power of attorneys you have to send us via post and after that process when we received your POAs signed by yourself and we have all your documents and your uh, account is ready on our portal we can start the registration process so we can handle all the documents and we can send it out to the different tax authorities and then we have uh, to wait to get back your VAT certificate for a given country. That's something that also lasts. So for the registration process, this is the quick part. Usually what takes most of the time is the tax authorities to actually um, get the VAT number. As government institutions, they're typically not the most efficient ones, neither are they looking to accelerate. So once you know that you have to register or once you've decided to do the online business, you should calculate that there's roughly two months that it will take to um, reg get registered in any of the European countries. And over back to you, Alexander, do you have any questions? Uh, no, at this point, I didn't have questions. I already want to see what will happen after I have uh, made an account and actually. Will you show us how it works inside? Yes, of course. So this was the, this is something that you must have done thousands of times setting up different accounts. The only great benefit is, so uh, I don't know if you, any of you have recently signed up with an accountant, but I'm sure that 
there was a little bit more paperwork involved than what we asked here for. As you can see, at the end of this process, we've already received the different papers that we will need from uh, you to get moving in each of the countries. So with these received, uh, we can sort out everything um, that you need to get sorted. So I wouldn't even uh, stay on this page any more time. Okay, before, before you continue, we have one question. Should Please. the power of attorney be notarized before sending to you? Okay, very good question. This must have come from a more experienced seller. Uh, <laughs> some of the countries have this requirement in not all countries. So Spain uh, requires an authorized uh, power of attorney and a few others. Uh, but for example, Germany, France, Czech, um, Republic, Poland. Czech Republic, Poland, they don't require. So an originally signed power of attorney is sufficient. Thank you. Let's continue. Any other questions coming from the audience, perhaps? Not yet. Not yet. I'll tell you. Okay, great. So I think um, this is all about the registrations. Now let's get back to the filing obligations and what do they, uh, what kind of complexities uh, they have. So we've highlighted here the few uh, key countries that are related to Amazon. We'll have on the next slide also the other countries. Just a quick confirmation from you, Alexander. You see the slides, right? Absolutely. Very good. Great. As, as, as a technology company, we always have to make sure that the technology works well. So <laughs> okay. making sure quality assurance in place. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so about the different obligations, um, typically once you start trading and once you get your head around the need to submit VAT returns, you, as, as a professional business person, you get to the point where you know that there's a VAT return. Well, a VAT return is just the tip of the iceberg. That's uh, one of many returns that you have to submit once you have a VAT number. Other things like EC sales list, safety files, God forgive to those who invented it, um, interest stat reports. These are also other local listings that are um, required are also uh, paramount to remain compliant. And this is where uh, I would like to take a little break just to give you another example of uh, why it's important to have uh, a good service provider and somebody who has experience in international taxation. What we see in recent years, especially since Amazon's market has been booming, there have been a lot of uh, shady uh, tax advisor wannabes um, creating companies and claiming they are helping you to get uh, compliant in, um, in the different countries, but actually what they do is they do the bare minimum and that's submitting VAT returns. Whereas there's a whole lot more than VAT returns to be submitted. And um, we've encountered countless uh, cases where clients came over to us from other service providers and they said, mm -hmm. well, I got this notification and I don't understand what is this EC sales list. And we told them, look, you're not the guy who needs to understand what EC sales lists are. It's your service provider who should have been submitting these over the last three years. And now that they how, haven't- How it is called? EC sales list. So European Commission, uh, European Council sales list. Mm -hmm. So these are basically, um, reports which summarize trade between different business partners uh, in European countries. So if you're a Lithuanian established company and you sell to a German established company, for mm -hmm. example, you're participating in Amazon's B2B business or you're a wholesaler of certain products, 
then you have to report basically the amount of uh, volume you sold to this specific customer and his VAT no EU valid uh, VAT number. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's something. Do you think it's done at your platform? Yes, it's done automatically. Okay. So we'll see that um, once we've discussed these different reporting obligations. The other uh, pain point that we see is uh, typically when sellers use multiple service providers for multiple countries, that there's uh, overlap or I even they're saying double taxation of uh, certain transactions. What does that mean? You sell uh, from, for example, remaining with the example you mentioned, you are a Riga established company, but you right. sell from uh, France to Spain. You have a VAT number in both France and Spain, and you have, you're usually using, uh, tax compliance service provider limited in France and taxation is fun in Spain. Now, when they receive the same set of reports, since it's two different companies calculating your li liability, mm -hmm. they are potentially reporting the same transactions in their own countries. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is they don't know, uh, they're not experienced in international e-commerce. Second reason is, they are taking a more risk averse approach because they have a liability on themselves. And these ultimately result in you as a taxpayer paying more. The way we do it is we take as a single provider your data for all the countries. And we usually suggest clients that it's best to keep them in one hand because then you can avoid double taxation in uh, errorously. And also it reduces basically the communication with a single service provider. You can get used to a single standardized process across all the countries and it will be easier for you over time to basically, even if you're interested in the VAT aspects of your business, to look in how the structure is, where the problems are, where uh, you're paying a lot of taxes and where you're paying less. Sounds, sounds very logical. Yeah. And then also the other uh, painful bit is to just follow up on these um, deadlines, make sure that everything is submitted on time. So we, what, what we like to ask our clients is, you just make the payments and leave everything else to us. We make the submission on time. We'll extract the data if you allow us to do so. And um, we'll take care and re help you remain compliant in all the countries. What you have to do is pay VAT. Okay. Let's continue further because we have uh, now 15 minutes till the end and I, we want to see how it works inside everybody. Yep. And we still have some questions with you to discuss. Perfect. So we're right on time. Just a few of the other countries and, but I won't show this individually. It's, I'll share my screen now, and please confirm if you see. The inside of it. Do you see the text? Yes. yes, I see it's uh, thinking right now. I have to say that uh, you did a great job on the design. Everything is very sm simple and very smooth. So you have a very good job. Thank you very much. We, that was one of the main uh, pains that we had in the past. I mean, taxi, tax, taxation is not sexy. So what we wanted to bring to our customers is, is even if it's not sexy, at least it's friendly. So <laughs> Stefan from Taxually, sexy taxation. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds great. <laughs> okay. Somebody said that taxing is sexing. Yeah, taxing is sexing. <laughs> okay. Let's Let continue. Let's uh, to drift it from the subject. What, um, what is important 
and we believe a differentiator in the market is to have a global overview of your VAT position and not just in on the global VAT position but also looking at individual countries so as an entrepreneur you can uh, at, at in one single place at a glance know exactly if there's a problem in your data or in the calculations that your service provider is making so you can flick through the countries track the different VATs how they change over time and this is a good reference to basically knowing that well if my sales was 12,000 in November and it was zero in January either I haven't uploaded my data in January or something has gone wrong so this is for anybody who's a high-level uh, businessman and just wants the overview and the confidence that he's doing something right, this is the place for him to look into it. But how do I get to this point and what do I need to do to actually see my data? So we've been talking about extraction, date, different data sources, and all being in one place. How does it look like? What I'm going to show you now is actually uh, an example of how you can upload data to our platform. This is going to be a manual process. It's a demo account, so I cannot really extract anything from Amazon. But basically, what I'm simulating now is an upload process of, um, of an Amazon file. How you would do it with a, a more traditional provider, basically, you would download this file, send it to uh, your tax provider by email, worst case, print it out and send it on paper. Uh, and then he will uh, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, make some calculations manually. Hopefully he will do the right thing and then send it back to you in a couple of days. Or weeks. We, or weeks <laughs> even, yeah. So, which is pretty common. I mean, what we, what we uh, benchmarked is that on average, it takes 14 days an accountant to prepare you with the calculations and send it to you, which means that if you are trading in multiple countries, you are pushed till the edge of the deadlines to make sure that you have everything, which is which can be pretty risky if you are uh, if the result is not something that you trust in. So basically, with our website, you can do this at the beginning of each month and calculate the files just by uploading them on the website. It takes a few minutes. And what it does apart from just um, accepting the files, it also validates every single box of the return report that has been uploaded. So if you have any incorrect dates, if you have any wrong information, missing information. Invalid VAT numbers, for example. Exactly. We can, we would sh show that issue to, to you right away. And what is very important here that uh, our uh, actually portal is integrated to Shopify and Amazon. So this is the manually uploaded uh, part of your VAT compliance. Now it's ready. Great. We are ready to move forward. So the file, it's been flawless, which is good. It means that we can proceed and see our uh, calculation. We have the possibility here to add additional information if we deem necessary. This will increase the accuracy of the reports. Now for the sake of the demo, uh, we will just skip this part and move directly to the actual um, calculation of the different returns and to see how it actually uh, looks like once you've um, received the different uh, reporting obligations and what, what are the next steps you, ha you have to take. So while, while this is processing, and the returns are being prepared just to give you another uh, cool feature that we really love and that's our live chat function so uh, we give you the confidence that you're never alone uh, 
actually is always there, there to help you out and we're there to help you out instantly. You have multiple ways. So you can either contact us here or if you have a special interest in doing so, so for WeChat or QQ, then uh, you have those options as well. And it's, we treat our customers as our uh, fellow uh, colleagues. So this live chat function is integrated in our internal tool. So basically corresponding with the client is not a difference than chatting about our morning routine with our colleagues. And okay. I've been talking too much as in the meantime, the uh, calculations have been prepared in the various countries. What we see here is Austria and then Bulgaria, France, even Romania has uh, been added to this account. These are just simple examples um, of the countries where we need to prepare the returns. And here basically you can instantly download the analysis. These are the supporting calculations. And if you have any questions regarding your previous or other, you can always look back in the My Transactions bit and check for what has been done for each of the periods and what is your payable amount and where you need to pay. But you, uh, you don't have uh, control, right, uh, of uh, whether your client has paid this VAT or has not whether there is a debt or there is no debt. So what, what is the amount uh, that the uh, Spanish government uh, is waiting from me right now? So that's, that's true. The only um, fine tuning to that sentence is that in some countries, we make the payments on behalf of the clients. So we pool the amounts that we show here into one single account so that uh, if you're, for example, trading in Spain and France exclusively, those are the two countries where we have this service um, enabled. You basically pay to taxually and we distribute the payments into other countries. We are sorting out legislation in other countries and uh, expanding this but service. At the same time, at the same time you control uh, the amount that you have paid and that you have calculated, but you don't have the information from government according to this exact company, right? No, the only way we can, and this is something that some countries let you retrieve that information, some mm -hmm. others uh, keep it private and you cannot access it. So it's limited indeed, especially if you look at a more European wide scale, it's limited. We have one more question here from the audience. Should I have to open a bank account in every country where I want to get VAT number? No, it's not necessary. So in those countries where it's necessary to have a local bank account, that's for example, Spain, we have our own bank account so that you don't have to open a bank account because that's a burdensome process. And uh, for example, if company is from Mexico, what currency should I pay taxes in Spain? You would always need to pay in the local reporting currency. So if it's Spain, then it's euros. If it's Poland, it's Zwati. If it's uh, Hungary, it's foreigns. So it's always the local currency. And um, the simplification we provide is that if it's a single, uh, it's where we are the payers. So we recalculate to you uh, what is the exact amount you will need in your local uh, currency. Okay. So you, I, send, I send money to Polish government in my, in my local currency and it automatically, uh, uh, or, or I have to buy the Polish Zloty in Mexico and send the Polish Zloty? How to, how to do this? The bank can transfer it on behalf of you, you know, but you can't control it or you can just uh, have a bank account with different uh, like currencies. Currencies, yes. And then uh, you can transfer the money in the given currency. Okay. One more question. Uh, 
Whoa, 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 whoa. No, there's not one, a lot of them. If I started my business without applying VAT in certain country and suddenly by my business grow up very quickly, what should I do? What are the, any penalty? R register immediately everywhere. Okay. Uh, yes, you can calculate with penalties in those cases. So um, not registering on time uh, is not really an excuse it's penalized and that's why taxes should be taken uh, seriously because tax authorities are not forgiving in this and if you have any historic obligation they will make you pay it before they give you a bad number yes. and it's especially true, just one more okay. sentence to this that amazon is also becoming very strict on vat yeah. numbers and if you don't have a vat number in a certain country they wouldn't even allow you to trade yeah so that's what i wanted to say they are blocking the accounts right now for example in the same Spring, time, they Germany. don't help you to get the vat number they're, they're trying they are offering for example us as a partner they are mm -hmm. um, offering other subsidies but indeed uh, we are continuously in conversation with them how it can be improved to help sellers not just on getting the vat number but also on the educational bit when they need to get a VAT number because that's uh, not just a taxation, taxation issue, but that's a general awareness. And I think in Europe, it's less of a concern than out of the region sellers who are not even in the VAT system generally. Okay. Could you please summarize the cost of service on the example of Spain? Mm -hmm. So it's what we charge is 750 euros a year that includes registration and submission of VAT returns for a year for online sellers for more complex businesses or large corporates we have a different pricing simply because they have more data different uh, formats more tricks uh, in it but um, hopefully this is a good number this includes the preparation of all the returns the submission and the payments okay and uh, one more from marina if i do not get the vat number and for example will sell from uk to france without vat how the government will find the company tricky question we get this a lot of times uh, tax authorities are corresponding more and more uh, tax authorities are analyzing accounts online. So we've, just to give you an example, we had a, a constant battle with clients is they know that they've been trading in the past. They don't want to admit it. They tell us, register us from April, 2020. They know uh, that they have been traded from January. We mm -hmm. register them from April. Tax authorities immediately comes back to us. Why do you have this post? feedback on Amazon's website from uh, January if you have if you say that you haven't been trading okay. uh, and also from Marina does the logistics service provider have any liability for the client who didn't get the VAT so it's ultimately the taxpayer so logistics service provider it's uh, making it a smoother experience but certainly has no liability in this process uh, it ha it has no liability but you said smoother what it, it's making the logistics part easier but has no liability in terms of taxes towards the taxpayers okay uh again question about the power of, uh, of attorney we have already answered that in some countries it has to be notarized in some no okay we actually uh, we have already run out of time so uh, can you finish the the main thing about the platform or or you said everything already you said everything we wanted to say okay so uh as i said uh, i always want to discuss a little bit the logistics because we are helping the e-com traders uh, to make, as you said, logistics smoother. We have warehouses and courier services all over the Europe. And so for me, it is very interesting to hear your feedback 
about your clients? Do you hear from your clients something about the situation with fulfillment, warehousing, FBA, and what, what do your clients uh, see, say, what do they need about the logistics? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, in these rough days, like during this uh, coronavirus, we had a bunch of clients who uh, moved their goods into the FBA warehouses and uh, they blocked the, the uh, transportation from FBA warehouses. And in this situation, I think it's a very good uh, time to use uh, special warehouses like uh, for example, Wapis warehouses, and from there you can. Uh, I hope you can immediately send every every kind of good, not just the necessary ones. Yeah, of course, it, it, it works the same. Like the same platform, no, it, it, different design, but the, the logic is the same. You're connected to marketplaces, you get the orders, and they're fulfilled in 24, 48 hours. Uh, but uh, the thing is that before this coronavirus, like most of the clients were using FBA uh, and now this shock therapy that happened with uh, FBA shows us, as you said, that uh, it is better to have an alternative for sure. It's always good to have one alternative service provider, I think. Uh, do, you have, do you have clients that use only their warehouses or everybody is using FBA? Most of our clients are using FBA, but yeah. a lot of them are using also other warehouses. So especially if they are selling uh, on multiple channels, so if they have their own website or if they have eBay or AliExpress, they tend to have um, um, some of them fulfillment have, provider yeah. as well on site. Some of them are using their own warehouses, like they are moving uh, the goods from, I don't know, like uh, local stores and they are sending them out to different countries, like on a weekly base or on the, you know, like daily base. Yeah. So we met with this uh, also with this type of clients. Thank you, thank you. Uh, again, the guests and viewers who are viewing us, please, if you have any question about warehousing fulfillment courier service in any country of Europe, you can uh, free instantly send us an email and we will help you to solve this question. We have a fulfillment network of warehouses all over the Europe. Um, what I want you to tell us in the end of our webinar. Uh, I usually uh, am saying that it is difficult to remember everything. So I ask my guests to give a takeaway, like three takeaways for our guests. Three main things about taxes, taxation and VAT in online business that you want everybody to remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will start with the first. Okay. So never want to hide yourself. Never hide your self, like your company or your business. Okay, never hide yourself. Number one. Second will be, I think. Pay on time. Yeah. Pay on time. And the third one. Sleep calm. <laughs> Sleep calm, yes, exactly. Choose <laughs> the right provider. Choose the right provider, yeah. Choose the right provider. But uh, most, a lot of people think that they can uh, uh, solve it out without the provider. We just uh, we, we, with their lawyers to find out everything, how it is done, and what for I need to choose the service provider. What will you answer to these people? That means that they're very rich. <laughs> it will take them a lot of their own time and it will take them a lot of money to do it especially if they're trading uh, across multiple countries so it is a possibility uh, it's just the more expensive way of doing it you know I'm uh, dealing with client, uh, clients on the daily basis and I met several clients like this and they just after some period came back to me that yeah. okay I'm done with that I don't want to deal with 
it anymore. So I will <laughs> go to your uh, site and I would like to register right now. So uh, we, we slightly go, yeah, you wanted to add something. Yes, Stefan. One more thing, you can pay 750 for uh, legal advice or you can have 750 for years worth of service. You decide whether you want to become smarter or whether you want your problem to go away. That's, that's right, that's right. It's pretty the same in logistics. Yeah, you, you can try to build this everything, but we're already doing it for four years, like 30, 30 employees on a daily basis, and it's a huge work. So you can try to build the same, but you'll get the result like uh, very, very, very expensive, and uh, nobody knows when. Uh, so three things that you want everybody not to do. Please don't do this one, two, three. We, we already saw these mistakes. We know this fails. It is very expensive for you. Just don't do these three things. If you know that uh, you have been trading in the past, just com commit to it. It was a business mistake you made. Admit it and uh, live with the consequences. It's much cheaper to live with the consequences of uh, not knowing it than trying to hide it because that's uh, a legal offense of evasion. So that's, that's um, number one. Uh, number two is if you receive a notice from a tax authorities, please don't try to solve it yourself. We've seen countless examples of uh, people trying to respond to tax authorities. Tax authorities are not always asking only for uh, one thing. There's typically more depth to that. So if you don't know what's their intention, then better consult with a professional, a lawyer, a tax advisor who can help you with uh, answering it in the right way. Mm -hmm. And third, if you're selling online, don't give up because this is just the beginning of it <laughs> okay don't and, give up it and, is just the beginning we prepared something uh, special for uh, today's audience uh, on the webinar and uh, so i would like to give you uh, all of you one uh, promotional code what you can use on mm -hmm. our website and you will get uh, 10% uh, discount on the first uh, country what, where you want to register and deal your VAT compliance. Okay, so what will be the promo code? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have, we have to do the drums. <laughs> it will be WAPI Tax. WAPI Tax. 20. WAPI Tax Tax 20. Let's write it. Let's write it in the chat for everybody. Vapi tax 20. Let's go. Uh, thank you guys for this. I think, uh, but it must, it must work for a long time because we will have some visitors who will, who uh, after the webinar, they will see the video and if they are um, patient enough and they will be with us for an hour, they'll get the promo code. <laughs> and, then, and then you can check how many of them there will be. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, two more final questions. The one is about the online trading business in general. So we have like everybody is talking about the crisis and COVID and something crazy that's going on in the world. What do you see and what do you think? Is this the right time to start the online business? Very interesting question. And um, what we see nowadays is in the last two months, those who were, who we process the data, and I can tell you this is in hundreds of millions of euros in total worth, we've seen a 30% increase in the wow. transactions processed. And these are not just the, um, the essentials, but it's also electronics, unbelievable thing. Computers went up by 20% in the last two months, laptops especially. 
as the corporates and those who were working on desktops were moving to a more flexible uh, working structure. They all had to buy up uh, laptops. So we've seen a pump in that. Uh, also, a lot of brick and mortar shops didn't have the ability to reach their clients. So it's been um, difficult for them to survive and finance their operation. So it's, it's something that's, um, yeah. I think if, if, if now it's not the moment, it will never be a better chance to jump on this train. Wonderful, wonderful. This is a very, very uh, motivating speech for everybody to start the online trading business right now. And uh, Robert has switched on the contacts. Please, everybody who uh, wants to uh, have no problems with taxes and VAT, uh, write down the contacts of Robert and Stevan, send them your questions, your information, and they'll 100% uh, help you with it. And for the last thing, what I want to know and understand is what is, the, what is your secret? So you said that you have started actually in the beginning of 2019. It means like uh, be one, one year, it's one year yeah. company and you are already also 30 people and, and you're like growing very fast. So what is your like personal life hacks, personal uh, secret? How, how did you manage to do this? Mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of multiple things. One of them being a really, really strong spirit. So in a small company, it's really essential that everybody knows that it's in it for all of them. So when, when I walk around the office and I know that everybody will do the extra mile to simplify the process for our clients, to reduce the administrative burden in-house. And this whole uh, um, approach of doing this business is something that was really key to our uh, success and, and the, the growth we've achieved. Also, it helps that we have this market for uh, 10, 15, uh, somebody even more years. So the, the domain of the, the, that's driving this business is also in place. And, that there's just every day when we wake up, we ask ourselves the questions, what more can we do for our clients? What more can we do for our people? Yeah. And how can we help them? Can you, can you, can you stop sharing the presentation so that we can see, everybody can see your... Yeah. So every day you think what more no not the video the presentation okay. this this screen share stop the, 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 the screen yeah 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 wonderful so every day you think what more can you do for the your clients yeah and how can we help them to focus more on their sales how can you help them to focus on their sales. Yeah, to let them focus, yeah. Focus on your clients and everything else will fall behind that. That's really important. If you know what your clients want and you build the right thing, you're unstoppable. Okay, that's great. So uh, if you want to say something more to the guests, please, you have this this time. If not, I'm very, very glad to have this webinar with you? I think, uh, I think a lot of things you can skip on the way to the success, but hard work is none of them. Hard work, that's right, hard work. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you everybody who was with us today and uh, I wish you good luck. I wish everybody good luck and it is great that uh, in my company, your company and the company of people who are here are already on the train of online trading business. It means that we, everybody who will work hard will be successful.
Thank you very much and good luck. Thank Hi. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.